Today we're going to combine what we learned in A1.6 about inequalities and what we learned yesterday about absolute value. Remember, absolute value represents distance. So, if the absolute value of x is less than 2, so I'm looking at this piece over here on the left. If the absolute value of x is less than 2, that means whatever x is, it needs to be between 0 and 2. It needs to be something with a distance of less than 2. So imagine that my head is 0. X needs to be within 2 units away from my head. This creates an AND inequality, which looks like this. So X can be anywhere in between negative 2 to positive 2 right around zero, covering zero. If the absolute value of x is greater than two, that means that the distance from zero needs to be bigger than two. So again, if my head is zero on a number line, I need the distance to be two or bigger, or I need it to be at negative two or farther away. So farther away from zero than two. That creates an OR inequality. And notice right here is that solved out OR inequality. <clears throat> the box right below that kind of summarizes that. If we have absolute value less than something, we're going to say less and than. Less and. I want you to get that stuck in your head. Less and. And we'll talk about how to set up that inequality in a second. If it's greater than, I want you to think great or. So change that word greater to great or, and that will help you remember that a greater than absolute value inequality, you need to set up an or inequality. All right, so let's try a couple of these. Number one, I apologize, there's not a ton of space here, but we will get it figured out. Number one is less than. So over here on the left, I'm going to write less and. An and inequality is a three-piece inequality. Smaller number, less than stuff, less than bigger number. We get that smaller number by taking the opposite of the right side. So negative 11 is less than 2x plus 7 is less than 11. Do you know how to solve that type of inequality? Yes. We're going to subtract 7. So we have negative 18 is less than 2x is less than, is that 4? Mental math sometimes eludes me. Divide by 2, negative 9 is less than x is less than 2. Really, I'm upset that there's not more space between the, the graph and number 3. So I'm going to graph this right over here. Negative 9, 2, open circle, open circle, shade in the middle. On your assignment, there's only four problems that you have to graph. The rest of them you're just going to solve. If you are struggling with the graphing, please let me know so that I can help you with the graphing of inequalities. I feel like the bigger thing today is can you set it up and solve it correctly? The graphing is just kind of extra. All right, let's try number two. Number two is another less and. but this time it's less than or equal to. Anyone wanna be brave? How do we set this up? Oh, I'm, hearing some, I'm hearing some mumblings. Negative 21, less than or equal to 4x minus nine, less than or equal to 21. So notice in number one, we use the less than symbol because we originally had a less than symbol. In this one, we use less than or equal to because we originally had less than or equal to. Okay, pause the video, take a moment, solve, graph this one. 
I don't care whether you put it as 7.5 or 15 thirds. If you want to write this as decimals to make it easier to put it on the number line, that is totally fine with me. Okay, number three, this time we're looking at greater. So over on the left, we should write great or. So we need to write two separate inequalities with the word or in between. I'm going to put the word or kind of right here in the middle. On the right side, I'm going to write the inequality exactly as it was given to me without the absolute value bars. So basically change nothing. One of your inequalities, you change nothing. The other inequality, we are going to change both the sign and the right side. So we're going to flip both of those. 3x minus 2 is less than or equal to negative 8. So flip the sign and take the opposite of the right side. Now we need to solve both of those inequalities. is 10 thirds 3.3 repeated yeah and you can leave it as 10 thirds if you want to but i know for putting it on the number line 3.3 .3 repeated might be easier whatever if the directions don't specify how to leave your answer then you get to pick so on this one, I've got negative two, and then over here, I've got 3.3 .3 repeated or 10 thirds, however you wanna put that on there. Closed circles this time. Or inequalities point away from each other. So X is less than or equal to negative two, that one's going to be shaded to the left. X is greater than or equal to 3.3 .3 repeated. That one's going to be shaded to the right. To set up number four, it's another great or. One of our inequalities, we don't change anything. So over here toward the right, I'm going to write negative 3X plus 10 is greater than five. Change nothing. The one on the left, I'm going to change the sign, so flip it to less than, and I'm going to take the opposite of the right side, so less than negative five. Okay, do you see something in this problem that's going to make this one a little bit screwy? The negative in front of the three, that's gonna make things a little bit weird. So take a moment and try to solve this one on your own, and then we'll talk about graphing in just a second. Okay, because we divided by the negative, the signs flipped, that means that this inequality is the one that actually goes over on the left. So 5 thirds is 1.67. 5 is the bigger number. So x is less than the 5 thirds. x is greater than the 5. Anytime you divide by a negative, even if we wrote our inequalities in the right order, it's going to flip things around. You just have to unflip them in your head before you graph them. Number five, what would we need to do first? Subtract six. So we have absolute value of 3x minus nine is greater than six. This is a great or. So see if you can set this up correctly for the next step. The first inequality, you flip it to less than and switch to negative six. So three X minus nine is less than negative six, or the other one is unchanged. Three X minus nine is greater than six. You would solve both of those and graph both of them. Feel okay about that one? Okay. I feel like you could do the rest of this on your own, so we're going to move on to save time. This next one, what should we do first? 
add eight. So we have absolute value of x plus 13 is less than or equal to negative one. Okay, when we solved absolute value equations, if we had a negative on the right side, that meant no solutions. That's kind of similar with inequalities, but there's two options. There's no solutions or there's many solutions. Anytime that you're working with absolute value and you see a negative on the right, I want that to be a red flag in your head. I want you to stop and think about it. So here's how I think this through. On the left side, I have absolute value. This is going to result in a positive number. Negative one is a negative number. Is it possible for a positive number to be smaller than a negative number? No, so this one is no solutions. If that symbol was flipped around, then it would be possible because positive numbers are bigger than negative numbers. So I want you to think about this statement and think about is this true or false? This is a false statement. That means no solutions. Okay, turn the page number seven. Again, I just wanna go through how to get this set up and then we'll move on. We won't do the whole problem. We would start by adding seven. What do we do with this three in front of the absolute value bars? Divide, you cannot distribute into absolute value. You have to divide. This is a less and. Take a moment, see if you can set this up correctly to solve. You should get this and inequality that you would then solve and graph if you are doing the problem fully. Okay, last one, number eight. We start by subtracting eight. Do any of you make your absolute value bars ridiculously long so that you don't confuse them with ones? Because I definitely do. Then we divide by two. Okay. I see a negative. Anytime that we see a negative with absolute value, we need to stop and think it through. The absolute value on the left is going to result in a positive number on the left. On the right side, we have a negative number. Is that a true statement? Yes, positive numbers are always bigger than negative numbers. This means many solutions or all real numbers or infinite solutions, however you want to write that. It basically means that no matter what you pick to plug into X, it is going to make a true statement because positive numbers are always bigger than negative numbers.